Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today I will um, solve, well, a couple of problems. It's not really problems, it's basically exercise and calculations um, related to um, effect of photo emission. Um, now, this is a continuation of previous two lectures where these um, effects of light, when the light, let's say, um, hits the surface of uh, metal, whatever, silver, for, for example, um, it can basically kicks off electrons. Now, this is a photo effect. It's a photoelectricity when electrons are kicked off. Now, we were talking about certain approaches, how to explain this particular um, effect. Now, um, we came to basically an explanation which was offered in 1905 by Albert Einstein, which in turn was based on certain propositions Max Planck did um, in the, at the end of the 19th century, like whatever, 10-15 years before that. Um, and it's all related to principle of uh, electromagnetic waves delivering energy not as a continuous uh, process, continuous in the mathematical um, uh, view, which means it can be subdivided into as small pieces as possible. Apparently that's not the case. Apparently there is something which is the minimum um, uh, of energy um, and be below this you cannot really deliver that energy, smaller than that minimum. And that minimum depends on the um, frequency of oscillations, basically. Um, now, it's kind of approach to quantum mechanics, to quantum theory. And I'm not going to, to go into all the details of this. I would like to stop actually where, where we are that the energy by electromagnetic field is delivered in certain pieces, photons, uh, quantum, if you wish, quantum of energy, which is called photon. That apparently explained a lot of different effects related to photoelectricity, um, suggested, uh, these old explanations suggested by Einstein, which, which he received the uh, Nobel Prize many years after, like 17 years after he actually published um, this article. And it was related to the fact that classic electromagnetic theory based on Ma Maxwell's equation is really uh, based on assumption of continuity, um, that it really is unbroken kind of thing. It's just waves basically in their classical viewpoint, like waves on the surface of the sea. Now, quantum approach, which suggested by Einstein, uh, was so much different, because it actually went back to Newtonian um, corpuscular theory of light, that the light are just individual particles. So it went basically, at least philosophically, to that particular side. And that's why this uh, explanation offered by Einstein was kind of met with skepticism, let's put it this way. But nevertheless, eventually um, his opinion basically won sufficient amount of support and sufficient amount of experiments were conducted and eventually it was really confirmed. So, these couple of exercises which I will do, I will based on that particular approach. Now, whenever an um, electron is circulating around the nucleus, that's our classic model. Well, um, we can call it that it, it actually goes in an orbit, a little bit more um, correct, ex uh, correct name actually, related to the fact that this is in three-dimensional world. So we can say that electron occupies the place somewhere in a shell of certain radius. So 
this shell um, is characterized by a certain amount of energy needed to kick this electron out from the attraction of the nucleus, of the protons in the nucleus, actually. So, um, while electron is at certain distance, there are obviously forces. Uh, electron is uh, negative, uh, proton in the nucleus is positive, they attract each other, and it all depends basically on the um, uh, distance between them and probably many other factors, but whatever it is, there is definitely attraction which keeps electron within that shell. Now, whenever the, elect uh, the uh, electromagnetic waves, like light, for example, hit the surface of, let's say, metal, like silver plate, for example, it needs this energy to kick off the electrons from their uh, uh, shell around, uh, around the nucleus. And we were talking about, um, in the previous lecture, some kind of, well, common sense explanation why higher frequency of light um, kind of expects to kick stronger, so to speak. And we basically came to an equation. Um, if you need a certain level of energy E, I will call it binding. This is energy which is necessary to kick off electron from um, from the shell where uh, it's uh, circulating around the nucleus. Now, this energy um, should be supplied by the light, by electromagnetic um, field, and each photon uh, is possessing energy equal to uh, Planck's constant and frequency of the light. So the higher frequency of the light, the higher energy this particular photon of that particular uh, light possesses. Now, as I was saying before, the quantum theory actually um, assumes that this energy is supplied in individual packets, if you wish, or quantum or of energy or photons, and it's supposed to be consumed by electron to excite it, and it needs to, to do something with this energy and it flies away. If the energy is greater than this, the flyaway electron has more kinetic energy after it broke its uh, relationship with the nucleus of the atom. So basically, uh, it's supposed to be this for electro for uh, for photoelectric effect to take place. So for each electron, or rather, all electrons which are sharing the same shell around the nucleus, this binding energy exists in some way. I mean it's measured somehow. There are certain experiments. And this is an energy of one quantum which uh, light, electromagnetic waves, possess. And as long as it's greater, then we have this effect of photoelectricity. Now, uh, my first problem is basically very simple. I have to uh, determine all the light characteristics like frequency, angular frequency, um, wavelengths, and the period, if I know the binding energy of specific electron or electrons in a specific shell. Um, well, n minimum, obviously, uh, whenever there is an equality here. So, equality means that this is minimum. So I would like to find this minimum frequency if I know this one. Well, this is a simple exercise, obviously, and uh, um, let, let's just do it very simply. So F minimum is equal to binding energy divided by 
Planck's constant. Simple enough. Now, other characteristics of that particular light. So we know the frequency. So what is, let's say, the period tau? Well, period is 1 over f, right? So the period um, is equal to h over e binding. Right? So the greater the frequency, the smaller the period. So if minimum, if this is minimum, this is actually maximum. So what is the maximum period of the wave falling on the surface of uh, whatever, the metal or whatever, um, needed to kick off electrons if energy of uh, binding is given. Now, what's next? Next is the um, wavelengths, lambda. Now, what is the wavelengths? Wavelengths is uh, speed of light times period, right? Speed times time gives you distance, and period is just one wave, so this is the length of one wave, from which we derive that this is C times H divided by E binding. What else do we need? Um, angular period. It's 2 pi times f, right? Because every circle, every um, oscillation is 2 pi in angular uh, frequency. So omega is equal to 2 pi times E binding divided by Planck's constant. So this is the kind of a, it's not really the problem, it's kind of an exercise, basically, on uh, algebraic uh, uh, manipulation with numbers. But this is the most important part. So whenever your quantum of energy supplies certain amount of energy, which is at least equal to this one, if we know this one, we can determine what kind of light is needed. And the second problem is to apply basically all this information to a concrete case. So concrete case is E binding is equal to 5.17 electron volt. Okay. And we have to do basically all the calculations um, with this particular example. Now. Um, and the first most important part, what is electron volt? Well, electron volt is also a unit of energy, like Joule. Joule is a seized unit, a Sistema Internationale, unit of work, of energy. Now, electron volt is just another, and we have to somehow convert it into Joules. Now, what is electron volt? Electron volt is energy needed for one electron to move between potentials of one volt. So how much energy we need to move electron between two electron uh, between two levels of energy um, uh, uh, differences in, in, in their voltage is one volt. Okay, now let's recall what is voltage. Voltage is amount <coughs> of energy needed for one coulomb to go from one place to another. Remember this, right? So if the voltage is one volt and I'm moving one electron, all I need to do is convert uh, the electron's charge into coulombs or express electron's charge in coulombs and multiplication of coulombs by volt gives me amount of work which is needed, right? <coughs> so the uh, voltage is one volt, so that's simple. So I need to know the charge of electron times voltage between two pieces, which is one volt, and that would equal to amount of work. So all I need is to know <coughs> to know um, 
what's the charge of electron in coulombs and this is given so let me just give it to you as condition electrons charge is 1 electron charge is equal to 1.602 blah 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 now more uh, numbers I have in um, the notes for this lecture times 10 to which degree? minus 19 Coulomb and we also need H which is Planck's constant which is 6 point, uh, 626 10 minus 34 and the units are meters square kilogram second so this is given now based on this I can say that one electron volt is equal to uh, charge times difference in potential difference in potential electric potential is one volt so it's basically 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules coulomb times volt that's joule okay so we got this and we have 5.17 electron volts so we have to multiply this by 517 and the result would be <coughs> and the result would be here 8.282 times 10 to minus 19 joule okay now we know H that's 6.626 so it's 6.626 times 10 minus 34 now F minimum so from here we can get F minimum by dividing um, the energy 8 point something 10 minus 19 divided by 6 point something um, 10 to the minus 34 so we can find this one and this is equal to Uh, 1.25 this one better times 10 to which degree? to 15 now let's talk about units okay so units is Joule divided by uh, this one, which is the Planck constant, which is meter square, kilogram, and second goes here, right? Now, what is Joule? Joule is its work, right? So it's force times distance. So it's Newton times distance, meters. Now, what is Newton? <coughs> well, Newton is the force, and the force is kilogram uh, mm, meter divided by second square, right? Kilogram times meter, mass times acceleration. This is the mass, and this is acceleration. F equals to M times A, remember? So what's the result? M and M is square and one second. So the result is one over second. 
which is actually correct uh, unit for frequency how many oscillations per second so we have correct dimension correct units which is very important we have to check the units all the time obviously okay from which we can find out the um, period which is inverse of this which would be 1 over 1.25 times 10 to the minus 15 seconds that's the period now lambda the um, wavelength is speed of light which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meter times this so we have to divide it by 125 10 minus 15 uh, uh, this is meter per second I'm sorry and now this is second so seconds go out and we have 3 divided by 125 which is what 2.4 so it's 2.4 times 10 to minus 7 right 8 minus 15 meter <coughs> well when light is concerned we usually do it in nanometers nanometers is 1 nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 of a meter so this is equal to I have to multiply this uh, add to a hundred and divide it by hundred so it would be 10 minus 9 and this would be 240 nanometers um, now 240 nanometers now the visible light is from about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers so this is shorter than the shortest visible light shortest visible um, light is what like uh, violet or something like this this is ultraviolet so when whenever ultraviolet light now these are by the way uh, the real numbers and I started from certain um, energy binding energy for uh, what was it 5.7 electron volt I think I took it from the gold <coughs> so if you have a plate of gold then electrons can be well there are certain orbits certain shells um, which which possess this particular um, binding energy so for gold you need ultraviolet uh, light of lengths wavelengths of 240 nanometers to start uh, kicking the electrons out and if I will increase intensity of this light retaining the frequency I will have more electrons but the energy of each electron as it comes out would be exactly the same and it's defined by the frequency so the frequency defines energy kinetic energy of each electron the intensity of the light, well, Im amplitude of light, of oscillations, amplitude, defines basically the number of um, electrons kicked out from the surface. So these are two kind of exercises. I don't want to say the problems. And um, uh, I suggested to read the notes for this lecture on unisor.com. Unisor.com called uh, Physics 14 uh, course. Um, so notes contain basically exact numbers here I just approximated as far as I know um, well basically that's it that kind of concludes my photoelectricity part of um, certain characteristics of light and there are some others which we will address in next lectures thank you very much and good luck <coughs>